Hi, thank you for joining the webinar on the Regenerative Medicine Standards Development Processes. Um, very much appreciate you joining today, and this is Kendra Chapel with Nexite Group. I'll be facilitating the webinar. As a reminder, this webinar will be recorded in its entirety and made available on the Standards Coordinating Body for Gene, Cell, and Regenerative Medicines and Cell-Based Drug Discovery, or SCB, website before the end of June, so this week. So today, we'll be discussing the value of standards and how you can become engaged in the standards development processes. Shortly, we'll hear from Allison Getz, the Operations Program Manager at SCB, or the Standards Coordinating Body, Claudia Zeibelberg, the CEO of Akron Biotech, Judith Arkadiakono, an international regulatory expert and standards liaison with the Office of Tissue and Advanced Therapies in the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research at the FDA, Simona Sarkar, a biomedical engineer with the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, and Don Henke, the Technical Program Manager at SCB. At the end of the webinar, you'll also understand how to access the webinar recording and continue to engage in standards development for regenerative medicine. I also want to note that at the end, we do have time set aside for questions. Uh, because of the number of participants in today's webinar, we will be collecting questions or any feedback via the chat function of the webinar instead of over the phone. You can access the chat function by clicking on the question mark icon to the right of your screen. This may be a question mark or a circle with a question mark inside of it. Please feel free to enter questions or feedback at any time during the webinar, and we will include those in the question and answer period at the end of the webinar. So first, I'm going to review some basic logistics of the webinar so that you know how to engage during the webinar. Uh, and then we'll provide an overview of the benefits of standards to the regenerative medicine field and share some ways in which we hope to improve coordination and engagement in standards development before we wrap up. So before we begin the presentation, I want to go over some basic logistics for the webinar. The slides for this webinar have been uploaded and are available in the handouts for this webinar located in the paper icon to the right of your screen. To improve sound quality for everyone, we have muted your phone. And while the speakers are sharing their presentations, please be thinking about any questions, provide feedback, or make comments. Uh, for any of those, please use the chat function by clicking on the question mark icon to the right of your screen. This may be a question mark or a circle with a question mark inside of it. And at the end of the webinar, when we have time for questions and answers, we'll be aggregating those questions and repeating them out, given the number of attendees in today's webinar. Now, um, we realize that there may be a number of questions during the limited time we have to answer them, but don't worry, we will capture all of the questions, comments, and feedback from the webinar. Your questions and feedback will help inform the recommendations to improve the processes and criteria for standards development in the regenerative medicine field. Also, if you have any technical issues, we have team members standing by to help resolve your challenges. Please use the chat function using the question mark icon for those any questions or challenges as well. And again, thank you for joining the webinar. Well, first, it is my pleasure to introduce Allison Getz, an Operations Program Manager at the Standards Coordinating Body. Allison coordinates community outreach, education, and communication with members for SCB. Prior to SCB, Allison worked for the American Nurses Association, where she planned, developed, and implemented the quality management initiatives for the association and supported the organization in maintaining the ISO 9001 standard. In addition, Allison worked for Vitel as a research specialist where she participated in the implementation and maintenance of the lab's quality management system and prepared laboratories for certification to the ISO 17025 standard. Allison, I'll now turn this over to you. Thank you, Kendra. Uh, let's start off today by reviewing the definition of standard. A standard is a commonly agreed way of doing something. Standards not only make life simpler, but they are hugely important in increasing the interoper 
operability, effectiveness, and efficiency of any repeated interaction. A standard can be a physical object or material, a document, or a set of reference data. Standards are the distilled wisdom of people with expertise in their subject matter and who know the needs of the organizations they represent. In essence, standards are knowledge. They're powerful tools that can help drive innovation and productivity. They can make organizations more successful and people's everyday lives easier, safer, and healthier. There are, there are a set of principles that underlay voluntary consensus standards development activities. For example, documentary standards are developed on the principles of openness, where anyone can participate, transparency, where essential information is accessible to all, due process, meaning there's fairness and equity, consensus, where there's general agreement, but not necessarily unanimity, unanimity and balance, meaning no single interest dominates. Standard reference materials, on the other hand, are developed on the principles of fitness for intended use, reference to specified properties, homogeneity, and stability. Standards should not adversely affect technology development, restrict commerce, or duplicate and or conflict with existing standards efforts. From idea generation to the final delivery of a product to market, standards are important throughout the product development pathway. The regenerative medicine field is ripe for standards development as a broad range of therapies intended to treat, modify, or reverse serious or life-threatening diseases or conditions are coming to fruition. Regenerative medicine offers great promise to patients who need these novel types of ther therapies. But along with great promise comes great challenges related to product testing, scientific protocols, product quality and specifications, performance characteristics, and compliance criteria. Having specific standards to advance this field will require broad input from stakeholders and subject matter experts. Having consensus-based standards can reduce barriers to innovation by outlining best practices for regenerative medicine development, which can reduce costly trial and error approaches. Standards can increase safety and reliability of therapies by having clearly defined processing and testing parameters from raw material sourcing to clinical administration. Standards can facilitate more efficient regulatory review processes. The increased use of use of standards could improve the efficiency of review processes by allowing regulatory bodies to focus their limited review resources on needs specific to regenerative medicine therapies. Standards can also decrease the cost of therapies. By standardizing equipment, methodologies, processes, and testing protocols, companies save time and money, which can then be passed on to the patient. Reducing or eliminating duplicate efforts frees capital that, ca that companies can invest in making products cheaper or more effective. Standards can mitigate risks to businesses or programs. Again, standards are a powerful tool in the protection of public health, safety, and the environment, development and commercial commercialization of new technologies, and facilitation of national and international commerce. A failed or poorly performed preclinical study or clinical trial is often catastrophic to a program. If standards are not developed and followed, the results could be devastating, particularly to small businesses and budget-constrained environments. Let's take a look now at the benefits of standards from several different perspectives. First, let's look at the benefit of standards from the industry perspective. I'd like to introduce Claudia Zilberberg. Claudia Zilberberg, PhD, is a leader in regenerative medicine. She's the founder and CEO of Akron Biotechnology, a manufacturer of CGMP-grade ancillary materials for the tissue, cell, and gene therapy industry. She also co-founded AssureImmune, an adult stem cell bank. Dr. Zilberberg holds numerous patents and has developed several patent-pending platform technologies in cryopreservation, novel formulations, and others. She has authored and co-authored several peer-reviewed publications and has received grants from the NIH and Department of Defense, among others. In her early years, Dr. Zilberberg worked at Navi Biopharmaceuticals, 
Pharmaceuticals, specializing in human plasma-derived products. Her experience in product development and protein manufacturing has been instrumental for the development of key materials to accelerate the regenerative medicine industry. In addition, she co-founded the Standards Coordinating Body and is a board member of ISCT, ARM, AABB's NDF, and the NAS Regenerative Medicine Forum. Other advisory positions include ISO US TAG, BioFlorida, ISSCR, CBA, and Biomedical Engineering University of Miami. Claudia, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Alison. Thank you for joining this webinar. I think that is quite important because we are in a stage at a time and maturity of the industry that will require several standards to move forward to bring more traceability to our products, reproducibility as we move along, and predictability that will lower the cost at the end of the day. In industry, the standards are critical to ensuring the technical relevancy of content and promoting product translation. That's why definitely uh, the reproducibility comes along very well in the standards world. They help to improve efficiency and decrease the cost by eliminating the redundancy, as I mentioned before, and improving the product quality and enabling factory flexibility and manufacturing at different sites and different locations. Standards also will help to lower the R&D cost because we start with the standardization right in mind when we start to develop a product. And by building on existing standardized technologies, we will be able to create products that are easy to translate to the industry in a seamless way. They increase the trade by making cross-border interoperability, as I mentioned before, and shorten the time between concept and the global availability. Uh, for further, for industry, sorry, as a, as a whole, standards can play a, role, a key role in enabling the development of a fully integrated industry infrastructure from end to end in terms of bioprocessing of regenerative medicine products. And include, that includes the storage, banking, transportation, primary and secondary long and uh, short distances, equipment, uh, and raw materials or ancillary materials, as we call it today, and upstream and downstream bioprocesses, in addition of assay methods, like, for example, cell, cell counting and others. Standards may also be used for support other infrastructure that may include data, interoperability, chain of custody, and management systems. So definitely we see that the maturity of the industry is a stage where standards are key and important to move products through the pipeline. Definitely the industry participation is key because we are the ones that either manufacture those components or those uh, uh, bioprocess equipment or participate in the transportation and services of this cell therapy. So industry is key to the building of the standards for the industry. And I think that uh, that closed my remarks. Open to questions. Thank you very much for sharing your perspective, Claudia. Uh, let's look now at another perspective, this time from the regulatory perspective. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you now Judith Archidiakono, who is an international regulatory expert at the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research in the Office of Tissues and Advanced Therapies. She is responsible for leading international activities and standards development activities for cell, tissue, and gene therapy. Judith also serves as a secretariat for the International Pharmaceutical Regulators Program, or IPRP, Cell Therapy Working Group, and the IPRP Gene Therapy Working Group. She is also FDA liaison to American Society of Testing Materials International, or ASTMI, FO4 Committee on Tissue Engineered Medical Products and ISO Technical Committee TC276 Biotechnology. Uh, Judy, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Allison. Um, I'm sure most uh, participants are thinking, why does FDA care about standards? In fact, FDA encourages sponsors of regulatory submissions and manufacturers to use voluntary documented consensus standards and reference materials to meet regulatory expectations with respect to product testing and characterization. 
in um, December 2017, FDA published a draft guidance on standards use um, in regulatory submissions to the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research, and soon we will be um, finalizing that document based on comments received from the public. But some of the benefits um, to standards may not be obvious to most. For From the FDA perspective, the sponsor's use of existing consensus standards can facilitate product development by reducing the need to develop unique methods or reference materials for individual products. Also, standards can help establish common language for therapeutic areas through information models, concepts, and controlled terminologies. Additionally, the use of standards can enhance the ability to perform complex analyses, and the ISO standard for cell counting is a perfect example of this. Also, um, using standards can build a foundation for broader benefits to clinical research, pre-market analysis, and safety signal detection. So overall, standards can benefit the entire regulatory process from preclinical development through licensure, and we encourage uh, manufacturers and developers to talk to us about how they would like to use a standard in their regulatory application. That concludes my remark. Thank you very much, Judy. Let's look now at one final perspective from the translational research. I'd like to introduce to you Simona Sarkar, who is a biomedical engineer at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. Dr. Sarkar received her bachelor's and master's degrees from Boston University and her PhD from Drexel University with a focus in regenerative medicine and biomaterials. Over the past six years at NIST, Dr. Sarkar has conducted research on cell material interactions and is currently working to improve measurement assurance for cell characteriz characterization methods commonly used in cell therapy and regenerative medicine with a particular focus on standards development. Simona, we'll turn it over to you. Hi, Allison, thank you very much. Um, so I, I find that um, standards are especially relevant um, at the translational point um, between research and industry and moving um, research innovation into um, products and, and towards the consumer. And standards really are uh, a pre-competitive resource um, that builds upon the collective best practices and science of the field that helps to drive in innovations efficiently to the consumer. And so by building on these um, best practices of the field, we can help to reduce the time to market um, with standards by providing guidelines and considerations for critical aspects of product manufacturing and quality control. And so um, a part of this is to facilitate the communication between many of the operating units um, within a company, as well as communications with regulators and stakeholders. And we can do this through standards by establishing um, common terminology, as well as common understanding of analytical methods and product characterization. Um, in addition, standards really can help to lower the barriers for interacting with key service providers, including those that provide ancillary materials, uh, provide transportation services, provide tissue and cell sources, and also, for example, equipment. And so all of these standards are um, really often geared towards the pain points in, in industry and towards the pain points in translation. And so by utilizing standards, you can help to reduce um, the, the challenges of starting de novo to address the pain points in your translational process. In addition, um, it's very, very valuable to have um, researcher and translation, uh, translational scientists, as well as um, industry perspectives in the development of standards, because these perspectives help to drive which standards are necessary and to ensure that the, the common best practices and the state of the art are reflected in standards development. So as a field at this moment, um, we can really help to drive the direction of the innovation and of the, the 
the industry um, by working together to develop these standards that we're going to be helping to build the basis for this industry moving forward. Um, so thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer questions at the end of at the end of the webinar. Thank you, Simona. And thank you, Allison, Claudia, Judy, and Simona, for sharing your perspective on how standards fit within the regenerative medicine field and kind of the benefits of considering and thinking about standards throughout uh, the product development cycle as well. Uh, as Simona mentioned, we'll have some question and answer time at the end of the webinar. And so if you have questions for any of the panelists, Allison or soon Don, please don't hesitate to put those into the chat function to the right of your screen, and we'll be aggregating those for the question and answer period at the end of the webinar. Now, we've spoken a bit about the benefits of standards. Now, Don Henke of SCB will speak a little bit about the support SCB is providing to help coordinate community engagement in standards development. It is my pleasure to introduce Don. She's the Technical Program Manager at the Standards Coordinating Body for Gene, Cell, and Regenerative Medicines and Cell-Based Drug Discovery, or SCB. The SCB brings together product developers, service providers, professional societies, government entities, and academic centers with the intent to support standards development in the regenerative medicine field. Dawn received her PhD in genetics from University of Alabama at Birmingham and worked as a postdoctoral fellow at the National Institutes of Health and the National Eye Institute in Stem Cell Research for two years. Don, let me now turn it over to you. Thank you, Kendra. The 21st Century Cures Act was signed into law December 13, 2016. It is a driving force for standards development in regenerative medicine. It's designed to help accelerate medical product development and bring new innovations and advances to patients who need them. This legislation directs the U.S. FDA to work with the, with the National Institutes of Standards and Technology and industry stakeholders to coordinate and prioritize regenerative medicine standards development. To help support this work, the FDA awarded a one-year contract to NetSite, NextSite Group to engage with experts to recommend processes and outline a roadmap for developing standards in regenerative medicine and advanced therapies. The Standards Coordinating Body for, cell gene, for Gene, Cell, and Regenerative Medicine and Cell-Based Drug Discovery has partnered with NextSite to provide subject matter technical support for this effort. Between now and September 2018, NextSite Group and SCB will work together to engage the community to gain a clear picture of the current regenerative medicine standards landscape and recommend an efficient standards development process that incorporates stakeholder input. The, standard, the SCB connects the regenerative medicine community to the standards development process and also works with appropriate regenerative medicine stakeholders to commit to the advancement of standards that may otherwise languish until independent action is taken and can serve as a driving force to ensure that emerging needs for standards development are addressed as the field evolves. A coordinating body like SCB is needed to actively, meaningfully, and efficiently engage the regenerative medicine community to help prevent duplication of efforts, ensure broad perspectives are incorporated, develop supporting evidence, and identify and leverage the expertise needed for advancement. SCB functions, functions as an unbiased nonprofit organization so that all stakeholders can be involved in standards that will enhance the entire community and accelerate innovation. To accelerate standards development, it is critical for standards to be selected based on how urgently they are needed and the impact they can have on the regenerative medicine community, rather than based on the preferences of those who understand standards development process and have more resources to commit. We want to emphasize that SCB is not an SDO, rather it works with SDOs to, co to coordinate the development of standards. We spoke a bit about how potential standards or the needs for standards can be identified, illustrated in step one for both documentary standards and reference standards materials. Because standards development processes can vary across multiple national and international SDOs, this slide generalizes the current state of the current state of standards development processes across all SDOs, including SDO-specific variations where applicable, to allow for broadly applicable recommendations for process improvements. The SDOs, the SDOs whose processes inform the current state of the standard development process are the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, ASTM International, the British Standards Institute, BSI, the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, CLSI, the International Organization for Standardization, ISO, and the United States Pharmacopeia, USP. The current state of the standards development process is divided into two sections, documentary standards and reference material standards. While some aspects of the processes for these standards are the same, the differences are significant enough that they cannot be combined and presented in a single section. 
The development process for both types of standards begins the same, then branches during the actual development of the standard. The key differences between each step in standard development occur once the SDOs begin work on the development of the standard. Since the physical reference materials need to be tested in laboratories, the, cr the criteria and study methods for conducting these tests do not overlap with the criteria that SDO working groups look for when reviewing documentary standards. Additionally, documentary standards can be revised at the end of the development process as needed, but uh, reference material standards are no longer valid, cannot be edited, and therefore must be withdrawn completely. SCB works to support the SDOs in these development activities by identifying needed expertise coordinating exploration as necessary, and helping to communicate progress and the status of the development efforts underway across the field. SCB functions to help facilitate the development of standards by helping navigate through the entire standard development process amongst different SDOs. A coordinated effort is needed across the regenerative medicine community to identify, prioritize, and recommend standards to develop. Currently, the lack of such an effort can result in duplicative standards development and difficulty identifying standards that may not rise to the top in any one sector, but could benefit the community as a whole. Members of the regenerative medicine community currently work in silos and must be self-motivated to engage in the standards development process. There's also a need for an unbiased organization dedicated to ensuring that all stakeholders, large and small, have a, have a voice in standards for regenerative medicine. Let's talk now about the steps of standards development process, and then we'll take a closer look at each one. The current development process for standards begins in regenerative medicine stakeholder groups, for example, regulatory and non-regulatory government agencies, academia, scientific societies, industry members, advocacy groups, and or clinicians and healthcare professionals, identify an area that could benefit from standards development. Such, standards need, such standard needs could include testing methodologies, methods for cell counting and measurement, storage and transportation methods, models, or clinical trial procedures, amongst others. With a more thorough understanding of the current landscape, the broad regenerative medicine community and the SCB can, move easily, can more easily and efficiently work together to identify gaps in existing standards and needs for new standards. This proactive and coordinated approach to needs identification is critical to reducing redundancies across the regenerative medicine community and accelerating both the coordinated and independent development of standards that target common industry needs, improve product quality and safety, and ultimately reduce the timeline for moving therapies from the laboratory to widespread use. The information may also aid in assessing the maturity of the regenerative medicine therapy space and inform gaps and needs for science and technology development or policy discussions. The landscape of existing standards and areas of needs is available today in the Regenerative Medicine Standards Landscape Report provided by SCB and NextSite. It provides an overview of existing standards by sector, an overview by application area. It provides an overview of nearly 200 existing standards relevant to the cell gene therapy, uh, cell gene therapy or tissue engineering sectors of regenerative medicine and assesses the needs and opportunities for standards development in regenerative medicine as identified by key stakeholders. We encourage you to review this report, and if you have any suggestions for improving the report or information on other standards relevant to regenerative medicine, please send them to Sarah Lickner and NextSite Group. Currently, there is no one repository for all regenerative medicine standards and other associated documents. Developing a central place for this information to be stored, proactively updating it, and pushing out those updates on a regular basis will serve as a valuable educational resource to the community and as a way to develop an improved understanding of the current landscape of regenerative medicine standards. We see the landscape report as a living document database that you, that, and need your input to help it remain current. With input from stakeholders in the regenerative medicine community, we also see developing and sharing a semi-annual report on areas of standards needs. There are several ways you can engage today to help identify standards needs. You can review and provide feedback on the regenerative medicine standards landscape report, participate in a semi-annual survey which will be used to gather the broader stakeholder community input from the progress of current standards development efforts, and context on current standards development efforts and background on areas of needs. Attend workshops and teleconference with SCB sector groups. Provide online feedback on the status of standards or suggestions for revisions to the list of existing applicable standards. After we've identified what standards are needed, the next step is prioritize them. To accelerate standards development, it is critical for standards to be selected based on how urgently they are needed and the impact they can have on the regenerative medicine community rather than based on their preferences of those who understand the standards development process and have more resources to commit. 
Currently, potential standards are not systematically prioritized through engagement with the broad regenerative medicine community, which can prevent the coordinated advancement of standards that are urgently needed and can have the greatest impact on the field of regenerative medicine. While there is a benefit in developing some regenerative medicine standards specific to one sector or functional area, focusing on developing standards that address common industry needs across functional areas and applications can have a more significant impact. A more comprehensive prioritization process could facilitate the early identification of any barriers or challenges to advancing these needs so that they can be proactively addressed, making the best use of time and resources required to develop standards. The ranking and rationale of each prioritized need based on its urgency and impact will be shared publicly with the regenerative medicine community to inform future coordinated advancement of that standard or potential independent action by researchers in industry or academia. Some valuable resources resulting from the prioritization efforts may include a public summary report on regenerative medicine standards needs with the cumulative prioritization results, for example, by sector and across the field, including the cross-sector rankings and rationale, as well as a short summary of each of the high-impact, high-urgency areas of standards needs for each sector and across the field that include the following. A description of the area of standard need with, supportive, with supporting context, a description of the related standards or standards efforts underway, rationale for initial prioritization, the potential value proposition for this area being addressed, the potential SDO or stakeholders interested in advancing this area and application of future standards, gaps in resources and expertise to advance this area, and potential barriers to adoption. There are several ways you can engage today in the prioritization of standards needs. First, you can participate in workshops and teleconferences with SCB sectors groups to assess and prioritize needs with cell therapy, gene therapy, and tissue engineering sectors. Second, you can participate in the semi-annual survey, which will gather broad stakeholder community input on the impact and urgency in areas of standards needs. Before committing to advance an area of standards needs, it is critically important to assess the feasibility of developing a potential standard and whether it will be widely adopted once it is available. The primary purpose of feasibility assessment is to evaluate the feasibility of a proposed standard in reference to its proposed relevance and anticipated impact to the field. Currently, there is no consistent or transparent process among SDOs to assess the feasibility of potential regenerative medicine standards prior to their development by an SDO. To inform improved decision-making about standards development, the regenerative medicine community should adopt a more consistent, systematic, and deliberate process to determine a standard's viability based on its scientific maturity, projected economic impact, and other relevant factors that affect its development or eventual adoption. The standards development process is resource and time intensive. Therefore, the outputs of feasibility assessments can inform decisions about whether investments of time, money, expertise, and coordination efforts required for standards advancement and development are worthwhile. The feasibility assessment process can also help facilitate more efficient use of resources during, the standards, develop, during standards development, support the identification of needs ex, needed experts and champions, and inform planning to avoid or mitigate anticipated barriers to development and adoption. The results of the feasibility assessment will be shared publicly with the broad regenerative medicine community to help demonstrate the value proposition for the development of, specific, of a specific standard, encourage involvement in and commitment to the standards development process, and build buy-in for the standards eventual adoption. Resources that could be available in the future include an updated one to 10 page summary of each of the high impact, high relevance areas of standards needs with revised content and inclusion of results of feasibility assessments, summary descriptions of the value proposition for potential standards areas. Stakeholder engagement will vary during this step depending on the expertise required to assess the potential standard. How you can engage today includes the following. You can participate in electronic surveys to help assess feasibility. You can attend facilitated working group meetings or larger regenerative medicine community workshops to come to a consensus on feasibility assessments for each potential standard. You can review monthly newsletters disseminated to the broad regenerative medicine community that include high-level results for the feasibility assessment. Advancing a potential standard to an SDO for development or developing best practices or guidance documents when areas of need are not appropriate or ready for standards development will require a committed and motivated working group composed of stakeholders with the right mix of expertise. During step four of the proposed future support to complement existing standards development processes, 
SCB will coordinate with information, expertise, stakeholders, and investment required to advance a potential standard so that it has the greatest chance for success. For example, development of best practices or graduation to an SDO. With dedicated support from a coordinating body, the advancement of each potential standard can be driven through the application and proven and, and consistent project management best practices and allow for thoughtful changes to the direction of potential standards advancement, making efficient use of the limited time and available funding of participating stakeholders. The coordinating body can also ensure that progress and lessons learned are shared across the regenerative medicine community to inform decision-making and investments and encourage awareness and adoption of standards. There are several ways that you can engage in this process today. There are resources available with a one to 10 page summary of each potential standard being advanced. There are also white papers, best practices, or guidance documents available. Documented potential standard advancement plan for each existing potential standard should be available. How you can engage is that you can participate in SCB facilitated teleconferences with working groups, join and participate in SDO technical committees and working groups, for example, ASTM and ISO, or you can contribute to the ongoing SCB projects listed on the SCB website. Here are two examples of how SCB is supporting the advancement of standards. The rapid microbial test methods are critical for assessing the quality and safety of the regenerative medicine products, yet many available methodologies are not suitable for cell and gene therapeutic product testing. To solicit inputs from the regenerative medicine community on advancing rapid microbial testing method technologies and standards, SCB, NIST, BioFab USA, and Nimble hosted a rapid microbial testing methods workshop on April 10, 2018. At this workshop, more than 60 experts from academia, regulatory agencies, standards development organizations, and industry identified, gap, and industry identified gaps in current methodologies, discussed associated standards and regulated gui regulatory guidance, reviewed novel rapid microbial testing methods, and outlined technical strategies and user requirement specifications for incorporating rapid microbial testing methods. SCB is currently driving the development of a white paper expected mid-2018 that will drive standards development in this area by recommending a risk-based strategy to replace growth-based sterility testing with more rapid techniques. SCB is also driving the, the development of a standard in ISO on the process for uh, rapid microbial testing methods, and possibly at ASTM with specific rapid microbial testing methods applicable to scaffold, uh, scaffold preparations. The consistent and precise handling of storage of cells during, dis during distribution is integral to the effectiveness of final cell therapy products. Building on efforts led by ISO from, uh, from Japan to generate definitions and general requirements for cell transportation, SCB is working with ISO uh, to address cell transportation challenges from perspective of both cell therapy suppliers and transportation logistic companies. The drafts of these standards, which focus on defining minimum requirements for regenerative medicine information technology infrastructure and transportation, shipment tracking, and monitoring protocols, chain of custody requirements, and centralized logistics management systems have been discussed at ISO TC276 in June 2018. During step five, SCB will support SDO standards development processes by helping to engage stakeholders from across the regenerative medicine community with needed expertise, fulfill information and data validation needs, and build regenerative medicine community buy-in for standards and standards development. SCB will help SDOs proactively identify experts to reduce delays in the standards development process and will ensure that regenerative medicine stakeholders will be impacted or buy or benefit from standards and development are aware of the efforts underway to help inform decision making, facilitate efficient planning, and avoid duplication of efforts. Currently, resources that are available in this area are a monthly newsletter that gives you updates on the standards development process, updates to the landscape of uh, regenerative medicine standards, and published standards that are available to the regenerative medicine community. The ways that you can engage in supporting standards development and coordination is to attend regular meetings with SDOs to stay updated on standards development progress and identify gaps in ex expertise or stakeholder engagement. You can participate in SCB working group meetings and workshops or join and participate in SDO technical committees and working groups, for example, ASTM and ISO. 
The increased awareness and adoption of standards across the broad regenerative medicine community is critical to spur innovation, enable efficient use of resources, and accelerate development and availability of safe and effective regenerative medicine therapies. To help build this awareness during step six, SCB will strategically communicate and disseminate information on newly available or revised standards to increase awareness and adoption of standards across the regenerative medicine community. SCB will develop and disseminate educational materials, including case studies, blog posts, newsletters, and webinars about new, in development, and existing standards to ensure that the value, benefits, and intended use of the standards are clear and compelling to a variety of stakeholder audiences. They will include educational webinars on standards for regenerative medicine, presentation decks on standards development, the standards landscape, and the benefits of standards, case studies of standards that use that demonstrate the value of standards, blogs that to offer easily accessible information on specific efforts and value across the field, as well as monthly newsletters sent to a broad list of regenerative medicine community stakeholders with updates on the entire standards development process. And now we have time for questions. Thank you very much, Don, for that overview. And thank you again, Allison, Claudia, Judy, and Simona. Um, we have a few minutes for questions before we wrap up the webinar. And as a reminder, if you have any questions, please enter those into the chat function by clicking on the question mark icon to the right of your screen. This may be a question mark or a circle with a question mark inside of it. Given the number of attendees in today's webinar, we'll be aggregating questions of a similar nature for the speakers or calling on specific questioners for the discussion. Let me give you a minute or so to type in your questions and comments. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to start in with our first question uh, from one of the participants. So uh, a general question, um, what if I want to know what existing standards apply to my area? In this case, particularly um, testing regenerated tissue. Allison, perhaps this is a good question for you. Sure. Uh, great question. I would say um, I would refer to the landscape report that is available on the SCB website um, as as Dawn mentioned, there are over 200 standards listed there. Um, so that would be um, my recommendation as a first stop, as to check if a standard is, is currently available for your um, topic area. Great. Thank you, Allison. Um, another question. What additional information is available beyond those we've already covered if I'd like to know more about standards development and kind of what's involved? Uh, again, I would I would refer to the SCB website. This is Allison. Dawn and I are happy to answer any questions you may ha might have. Um, so the SCB website is a good resource, um, as well as websites um, from the major SDOs that we've talked about. So, for example, ISO, ASTM, A ANSI, A N S I. Uh, the the NIST website is also another valuable resource. There's also the SCB newsletter for any current updates on any of the changes that are ongoing in standards development. Great. Thank you. Uh, I also suspect that people are interested in getting involved but may not have a lot of time available. Can you talk a little bit about what the options are for those who would like to become engaged in standards development, whether they have a little time or a lot of time to kind of dive in? Well, they could contact the SCB and look at our project list to see kind of what kind of projects we're engaged in. And you know, they could become targeted on those specific projects that they're involved in, which would mostly involve contributing their technical expertise and, and opinions on those projects. And those, if they focus on just those specific projects that they're interested in, should not be that time consuming and they'd be able to give valuable input in the standards development process. Great, thanks. Um, another question from our participants. How will SCB balance the different priorities of the different stakeholders when evaluating which efforts to move forward versus which one kind of stay parked? That is also a good question. Um, we do have our, our sectors that can just consist of a broad range of different stakeholder types that can all give their input so that together we can have a, a joint input from all the different stakeholders to determine which efforts are you know, necessary to prioritize. 
A broad and general question, just about SCB. Who makes up SCB? Is it volunteers, paid staff? How does that work? Um, yes, we do have paid staff as well as um, volunteers. So we do have uh, about 86 organizations that are heavily involved uh, in the SCB's work. Um, we have paid staff, we have a board of directors, an executive committee. Um, but yeah, uh, our, members, our membership, our participation is open to anyone in the regenerative medicine field. So we encourage anyone to participate. And with all the standards we already have, SAC, FDA, AABB, and others, why do we need to add um, regenerative standards? Well, the regenerative medicine field has quite a few different challenges from many of the current standards that are available that are emerging as the field is, is developing and changing and progressing with new different technologies being developed every day. So there's a constant need for the development of new standards that would apply specifically to this area, as well as the fact that some of those standards are not necessarily consensus standards and or internationally accepted standards. And so Sometimes there's a need for the development of specific international standards that can be broadly applied and, and agreed upon by everyone. Great. Thanks, Don. And specifically, I know we talked a lot and you kind of gave an overview of SCB working in a complementary and supportive manner with the uh, Standards Development Organizations, or SDOs. Can you talk a little bit about um, how SCB will work with the SDOs and then talk a little bit about how SCB CB is working with um, SDOs today or now? Sure. So, uh, yeah, we would like to, we've engaged quite a few SDOs uh, to understand their process and determine what they would like from us and how we can actually help them. Um, specifically, currently, we are working with ISO to help drive quite a few uh, standards that are in development with ISO and help gauge the, or help uh, organize the correct expertise to, to develop the right content for some of the standards that are ongoing in the development process, as well as to, to, to attend some of the ISO meetings to help to give our stakeholders a voice in these processes in things that they don't have the time to develop, to vote completely to some of these meetings. Um, we are also currently uh, working with ASTM to help develop standards as well and hold workshops on certain topics that they're interested in to help get all the stakeholders that are involved with expertise in this area together to, to kind of hash out some of the details and come to a consensus on many of these topics. Uh, in addition, we've also had exchanges with ASME, um, EU, as well as USP. Great. So it sounds like you're very much actively engaged now and plan to be even more so going into the future. So just with an eye towards time, I want to thank all of the participants again for joining today's webinar and again thank Allison, Claudia, Judy, Simona, and Don for sharing their expertise um, as we walk through the standards development process. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how standards affect regenerative medicine and how you can participate in the standards development process individually or as part of the organization. If you'd like to remain engaged in this work, please sign up for regular communications or participate in the standards development process by emailing Allison Guest at the email on this slide. Uh, I hope that this webinar inspired you to participate in a workshop focused on standards development at either potentially the CAS CGPP Symposium on Wednesday, July 11th, or a meeting on characterization of fiber-based scaffolds on Friday, August 10th. More information on both of these events can be found on the SCB website, and it's an excellent way to really become engaged and dig deep in specific standards advancement. If you would like to download the slides for this webinar, they are available on the handouts on your screen, located at the paper icon to the right of your screen. In addition, the webinar recording and a copy of the slides will be made available on the SCB website later this week. The previous webinars, offering an introduction to standards and providing some examples of standards development projects, are also available on the SCB website. Please take a look and pass the information along to your colleagues and save that for a lovely rainy day or a sunny one as it may fit for the summer. Thank you again, and this concludes today's webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday.